Welcome. The follow-up video. In the previous video, we talked about uh, adding um, 32 more cells to the existing system. And we're in the process of doing that now. And this was the original cell bank. And you can see the long lines are in balancing on the old ones. We're going to pan down here to the new ones. Let's turn on some light here so it makes it a little bit easier to see. There we go. Hopefully that light doesn't swamp you out too bad but there's 16 a bank of 16 and one and you'll notice the fuses the big class t fuses are not in so the long lines are hooked up but it's not a part of the main array yet and there's the second group of 16 behind you and as we spoke about uh, you can see the long line communications cables here they just loop from one to one to one so when we added the new ones, we took the cable off of this first stack here, which this would be cell number 16, because remember, we started here and began our loops. This was cell 16 that used to go back up to the controller to complete the circuit. Instead, we ran the wire down to that first long line and that bank of 16 behind, continued the loop again, bringing the last one from that long mod over to the beginning, the first one in this series here. And again, loops through all 16. And then finally, this one is the one that now runs up and plugs into the two pin connector on the little adapter up here that goes into the watch mod and that completes our circuit. Now we went through the process of adding in the additional 32 long mods, getting them uh, synced up with the network. Uh, there are plenty of videos online uh, that show you how to do this. Again, Lithium Solar has some great videos in reference to this and as well as many others. I may do a video on that uh, when I get some uh, capturing software, things of that nature. But you'll notice that even though these, all the batteries right now, are in what Beachum calls the bypass mode. Uh, that's because uh, what we're trying to do here, and not trying, but what we are doing, is that now that we have 32 more cells in, and they're in the Watchmon software, um, there is a slight voltage difference. Uh, not much, but uh, these are a little bit higher state of charge than the ones we're adding, which is perfectly normal because these were hooked up in parallel with each other, each group of 16, but they've never seen a charger. So they're at pretty close levels to themselves, but not in relation to the group of 16, the first group of 16 that you've seen that will be run for over a week. So they're disconnected from the main array, they're, aka their fuses are taken out. So what we've done is we've gone into the Watchmon so or Batrium software and we've done a manual profile for the type of battery and we've manually set the bypass voltage to be the same voltage as our lowest cell, which in this case is 3.27 volts currently. So we're having the Watchmons go through and for every cell that's above that voltage, they're in bypass right now, bleeding off that excess energy to get all the cells as close as we can to each other before we take these two new, two new packs and allow them to join together. So we don't want a huge difference in your potential, your charge, your, basically your charge level uh, between an, a pack you're adding in and a new pack. Uh, if you have a a big difference what will happen is that you'll have a huge surge of energy that will be transferred from the pack with the highest potential down to the pack with the lowest potential and that could be dangerous so we're going to just and uh, we do have the solar array on bypass right now with the charge controllers disconnected so they're not adding any additional energy into the mix and we're just going to let batrium do its thing and longmons do their thing continue to stay in bypass mode until everybody is about as close as we can get to that um, same 3.27 volt mark. Once we have that, 
then we will um, add in these packs, these new packs into the overall unit and then uh, re-enable the charge controllers. But as you can see, everything is uh, put together and uh, so far is working uh, normally. And uh, you, you probably noticed that we did go through and wrap all the cables of our long mons. It, it does add time to the process, but it, it, it does, in my opinion, make a, a little bit better of a finished product. This is that nylon webbing that you've seen in uh, previous videos, and you can get this stuff on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description to the size that I'm using here. So yeah, you know, a little bit of a little bit of a pain to work with, but um, the outcome looks uh, a lot better than if you just kind of have the wires just kind of dangling there, in my opinion. But you know, to each their own. You uh, you set your solar system up and your battery bank up with uh, what you're comfortable with, and you know, let others do their thing and, you know, don't let somebody come back and uh, try to tell you that just because you didn't use tie wraps in a certain location that it's uh, not good or won't get the job done. You know, to each their own. It's the one thing about uh, do-it-yourself projects is that, you know, you, you do things based on the level that you want to see them. It's, uh, it's your item. It's no one else's item. So you set it up and how it makes you happy. But that is just a quick update to show you that we've got 32 more cells added in and we're just in bypass mode right now waiting for everybody to come down to the same level and then uh, we'll get everything uh, back and running on the main system and we'll bring you back then and uh, shoot a little bit of follow up but uh, for now the, um, that'll do it for this video. Thank you much. Bye.